Oftentimes people will come to us with character designs. One of the things that we really notice is that there are some common pitfalls that no matter your level, no matter your experience, you're going to fall into at some point in your artistic or creative career. So we're going to open up the three of us to, to some creative pitfalls that we often see. So what do you guys think? Runway development is one I've, I've seen a lot. The, the character development design cycle that we that we've been preaching it works really well and sometimes it works too well uh sometimes it, it it's possible to become so enamored with uh, a design choice or development choice that you essentially rewrite everything that you've done around this one thing that you're so in love with and it's generally really detrimental to the story you're trying to tell and ultimately you know it's it's really important to make sure that the design and development choices you make serve the larger story and aren't just there to, to indulge this one little fancy. Anyone else got one? You know, I, I notice, and I've done this myself, I'm sure, um, is when we're making color choices, sometimes it's, it's very easy to go overboard with the color. Or uh, one common thing that uh, I know I used to do when I was younger was, you know, if I wanted to make a dark character... I'm going to use a ton of black and a ton of grays. I mean, you can be a little more adventurous than that. Uh, be creative with your color choices. Uh, a good example is Raven from Teen Titans. You know, overall a dark character. She's kind of a gothic character. Yet, you know, her color palette is largely blues, purples, grays. I mean, the only black on her is, you know, the shadows on her. So... You know, if you have like a dark character, don't just lean back on a simple, easy choice like like black. Yeah. Keep in mind your other characters and the world around them when you're also doing your color palette choices. Or just the design in general. Or just the design in general. One of the things that we ran into originally was um, with our character Link, who's the bald guy with the tattoos on his head. He originally had neon green pants. And the reason why we gave him neon green pants was because we wanted him to be outlandish and crazy and, you know, kind of really exuberant. And we realized that... A little too exuberant. A little too exuberant. Um, he didn't fit in with the other characters because he looked so crazy in his color scheme and color palette. So once we knocked that back a bit, we realized, okay you have to leave some room for your character to act. And if you're doing everything through the... If Just, you're if you're relying too much on the design to get across what your character is supposed to be without letting the character act in of themselves, it's going to be a little awkward. And that's why context is really everything. Your character will be compared to the world around them, and they have to look like they're part of the same world, no matter what. A really good example of this is Samurai Jack. He comes from a totally different time period. He's wearing totally different clothes. He comes, you know, from this, this place of being absolutely outside of his own, his own comfort zone. But when you look at him in context to the rest of the world around him, he actually looks like he belongs there. Okay. But I'm going to say the number one cardinal sin I have seen as a pitfall for character design is slapping on arbitrary accessories. Yep. <laughs> this this means spikes on evil characters to show that they're evil. This means bat nipples. You do not need anatomically correct nipples on a bat suit. It is completely arbitrary and unnecessary. However, there's places where you can have design that matches development. And one great example is Han Solo. For example, his belt. It, it'd be... You know, Fairly easy to say, oh, that, that's, you know, that's really too outlandish. You know, there's no reason for all of that. But if you think about his character as, you know, from a development standpoint, this is a character who is a smuggler. He is also someone who has to pretty much play the role of mechanic nine times out of ten. The Millennium Falcon is always breaking down and he has to be the one who is going and fixing it. So having essentially what looks like a tool belt that also looks like a cowboy, you know, gunslinger uh, rig, that really does a great job of communicating his character. If you look at his pants, they've got a pinstripe this down the side. Uh, if you know about his backstory, uh, admittedly, this is the extended universe, and I'm looking forward to the hate mail telling me whether the extended universe is you know, <laughs> legit or not. 
he was part of the Karelian security forces. So that speaks to his design or it speaks to who he is as a character in his development. Uh, I, I could keep going on and on. The, the, the fact that his, his, his undershirt is long sleeved, but has an open collar really speaks to the fact that, you know, he needs to be comfortable everywhere, but he's, he's roguish. And it, it's just, we, we can keep doing this, but it all comes back to some sort of development reason. It's none of it is arbitrary. Not to mention, I've just got to stick this in there. Uh, Han Solo's sling of his gun is right on his hip, so he literally shoots from the hip. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of interesting how you can really come into character work and and really expand on things without giving without doing too much. Ultimately, less is more when it comes to character design. Always less. 